Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. First off, I appreciate you coming and checking out the show. If this is your first time here, welcome. Take a look around, make yourself comfortable, and if it doesn't suck too terribly bad, go back and listen to any of the other episodes. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, this is available via iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, Google Play, uh, TuneIn, and soon to be on iHeartRadio. Uh, if you want to watch this, this, <laughs> or have it running in a computer, something like that, you can also check it out on YouTube, on our channel, WCR Nation, uh, and uh, that's where we get a lot of the comments, so please, please, please do comment on it. If you are part of the nation, if you are one of the many who watch, follow, love, and just comment on everything, thank you! Thank you. It is because of you that we do the show. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I really, really love hearing from you guys and gals. You guys send me emails, texts, uh, show ideas, just text messages saying, what's up? I love the show. I mean, I love that. I love that. Please keep doing that. Um, my number is 862-312-2026. If you want to send me a message, certainly do that. Uh, and also, I am a sales rep for a Window Cleaning Resource. So if there's anything that you need supply-wise, anything, please let me put the order in for you. Give me a call. Uh, text me, like I said, or email me, josh at windowcleaningresource.com, and I can certainly do that for you. That's like a virtual high-five letting me uh, put your sales in. So definitely, definitely do that. And if you're part of the nation, and I see your name come across, and I didn't put your sale in, I'm going to be mildly displeased. No, but seriously, definitely appreciate it. And I have the best customers in the world. The best customers in the world. So you guys who do order through me, man, I can't say enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as far as shout-outs go this week, i got a few. First off, Luke Anderson. want to say what's up to him. Um, cool, cool dude. Uh, Mike with uh, AWC TV. Uh, thanks for everything. First off, if you guys haven't checked out AWC TV or American Window Cleaner, um, do it. They're awesome. Uh, he's cool. Uh, he got uh, interviewed me, which was awesome. That's always fun to do, um, and that should be out soon too. Um, also, Richie Blue, what's up, man? What is up? Uh, Richie Blue is back. I haven't talked to him in a while. Got to again. He is uh, the creator of the uh, tip jar bucket uh, on a belt. It's awesome, awesome tool. You'll definitely be seeing a lot more of that coming out. Um, and finally, uh, Adrian Ramirez. What's up, man? What's up? Uh, another awesome customer of mine. So those are shout outs for this week. <sighs> This week is a fun topic. It is uh, a really, really interesting topic because there's two ways of doing this. You could either listen to what we're going to talk about today and go that route or don't go that route at all, which, yeah, like we just give you our opinion uh, on the show here. You can kind of take with it what you want. But this week, we're going to be talking about getting out of the truck. Now, I always say, and this is truly, truly the truth, no matter what you do and how you do it, it's your business and it's right. If you decide you want to be a one-man show forever, that's awesome. If you want to decide that you're in the season of your business where you want to try to grow with employees, that's awesome. If you want to have just a helper, that's awesome because it's your business. Anything you do is right, really. But this is for the people who are now in this stage of their company and their business and the the baby that is their company of getting out of the truck. Is it time? You know, what do you do? How do you take the steps to get out of the truck? How do you decide if it's something you want to do? And I always say you're building a, a company or an empire, right? Um, if you're a one man show, when you make a dollar, you make a dollar, right? You know that already. When you have employees, when they make a dollar, you make like eight cents. Like when it all translates down, it's not a lot. But there's so many more things that come along with than just money. And we all know we're in business for the freedom, the lifestyle, the 
Oh, that sounds so cheesy. The lifestyle, right? The business. Yeah, business owner lifestyle is not what it's all cracked up to be. But the freedom is really it. The time, the being able to do whatever you want. Now, having employees and having that part of it where your job is in the truck helps you grow your company so much more. Now, think about this. If you are out doing eight hours of window cleaning a day, what time of the day are you able to do extra sales? What time of the day are you able to do all the other hats that come along with it, right? You, you find time. Maybe you come in on a Saturday, you whip through the paperwork and do all that stuff because you're just busy doing everything else. You just are leaving a lot of it on the table. Now, when you have employees doing it, now all of a sudden your job changes from the work, which was the longest and most kind of time-consuming part. Now... Your time has to be taken up by other things. Other things that you never knew you could spend eight hours a day doing. You certainly can. You certainly can. Um, This is just for you uh, people in the nation here. But um, Window Cleaner uh, uh, Blueprint is actually going to be done as an audiobook. uh, Which I am reading actually as we speak and doing the audiobook. Um, so that will come out actually early next year. And the one thing that you see in that that impresses everybody who's ever gotten this book. By the way, it's from uh, Chris Lamberditis, like uh, owner of Window Cleaning Resource, uh, kind of on how he started All County Window Cleaning. And um, the the thing that stands the most out in this is the growth, the speed at what he grows. The reason that you can do that is because you're not out in the field. But when you grow, your headaches grow. 100% your headaches will go up. Uh, There's just no way around that, right? So when you make extra money, you go, man, I didn't have to do anything for that money. Oh, you sure did. You had to deal with a bunch of BS to get that. So pros and cons, but if you're going to grow, if you want to be a bigger empire, if you want to take on more work, or if you just hit capacity... And you need to accept the the new work coming in, then maybe it's time to get out of the truck. Here's a few things on what to do, how to kind of work it, and you know some ideas, some some just things. But first off, what you need to do is understand if you uh, are able to, right? If the numbers allow it. If you have uh, forty hours of week a week of work. And you're completely book solid at that. Obviously, it's seasonal, so we get it. But if you have so much work that you're working full time, and somebody else would take those hours and run full time, would they be happy with those amount of hours? Right? If you average in your whole year, you average 12 hours a week, it's maybe not time to do that. Now, sure, if you could find somebody at, at a lower amount, then you need to really bust your hump to get that extra work. But maybe that's the possibility. If you want to alleviate that to allow yourself to grow, finding somebody to take on the actual work, you're able to do so much more. Now, remember in window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, all that other fun stuff, all those services that we kind of all offer, um, the cleaning part is the least important part. And I know you're going to be like, what? It's BS, man. We do the best window cleaning. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. But you have to understand that the clean window, the clean roof, the clean concrete, the clean house, the whatever is the expected. That's the easy part. That's just, it's clean or it's not clean, right? The focus some people put on that part is is just not necessary. But what is important is the business side of things. What kind of company are you building, right? What kind of company are you making? If you decide that it's time to get out of the truck, now it's time to focus on the other parts that haven't really been focused on, like the systems, like the um, advertising, marketing, sales, uh, branding, all of that now can be focused on so that the company gets more healthy. And I always feel this way. If you're a one-man show, again, awesome. But a company is so much more healthy when there can be employees and you can get out of the truck. There's so many more hats to wear when you're out of the truck that need to be focused on. And if your numbers are allowing it, it may be time. Um, Think about this. If you have uh, $50 an hour, we'll say even numbers, no necessary, certainly write me an email or uh, shoot me a text that you make more or even comment down below what your hourly is if you're watching this on YouTube. It's awesome and I really love to see that. 
but say $50 for even numbers. If you're making $50 an hour in production per man hour, okay? And you hire a guy in at $10. Again, for even numbers, don't tell me I'm an idiot for trying to hire people at $10 an hour and you pay $33 an hour. I don't care. I could give two dumps, right? But what I'm trying to get at is for even numbers, the extra amount of money is the $40. That $40 is yours no matter if you have somebody working for you or if you do it, right? Production, $50 an hour. $40 of that is yours. So if you're out in the field doing the cleaning, you're only making $10 an hour. What? No, I'm not. I'm making 50. No, listen, that 40 is yours no matter if you got somebody else doing it or you're doing it yourself, right? So you're doing the work. You're only getting an extra $10 an hour. You're only getting $10 an hour to do that work if you're doing it or somebody else is doing it. So keep that in mind when you go, oh man, if I have somebody else doing it, you know, then uh, I'm, I, I just make so much more if I do it myself. You don't make so much more by doing it yourself. What happens is, yes, there's extra costs and things like that, but the real hourly breakdown and simplified numbers is $10. You're going to get whatever you pay a tech is what you're getting because you're not paying the tech to do it. You're doing it yourself. The rest of it's yours. So think about that. When you think that you can't get out of the truck because of those numbers or the uh, science behind it, you can. You know, that's really what you're working on is only that $10 an hour. Now, is it worth only $10 an hour to not focus on your branding, to not do marketing, to not chase the big fish, to not do the sales, to not do all that other stuff? Is it worth it? That's only up to you to decide. But those are the numbers. Those are the numbers that are telling you if you can do it. Now, here is what happens. The first employee, it can be an even transfer. Now, what's going to happen when you decide you want to get somebody in, you're going to hire somebody on, uh, which you're going to deal with the fun of employees and hiring. But when you bring somebody on, you need to work with them so that they get it figured out. And it needs to be a while. You need to work with that person for four weeks as you kind of implement what they're doing and what you're doing and what they're learning and get, they have to be sound. They have to be um, strong at what they do because now all of a sudden when the day comes, when you're out of the field 100%, they need to 100% know what they're doing out there. So you have to remember that the first employee takes a lot of work. Then that employee can train others from down the road. That is if they don't leave you high and dry, right? So the first employee is a merge. You have 40 hours a week, you hire them on, now you're still doing 40 hours a week, but you have another employee, right? So that's the point of training that you're losing a little bit more money, but what you're doing is building a strong employee that is going to be able to help everything down the road. So as you introduce them to window cleaning, explaining things and getting them comfortable, maybe they're faster, maybe they're slower, you'll get to know that. And as you pull yourself out, even if you say, okay, Today, out of this eight hours today, I'm going to do six hours. You're going to do two by yourself. The last two are really easy. Well, now what are you going to do in those two hours? What you need to understand is you're now an employee of your company to a degree. You have to be somebody from there finding enough time to do stuff and getting things done that the freedom side of things don't misuse that when you have that extra two hours and eventually eight hours a day you have to do something that creates worth in your business and now what your job is is as you're merging as you're pulling yourself out your sole job to focus on your biggest focus should be filling the schedule for the guys now your entire business is riding your entire being is making hours and getting the employees to be happy and producing and all of that, right? So if you're going to play, uh, you know, in a daytime pool league or something, instead of selling or branding or doing something, you're wasting the opportunity. You're going to eventually, if you're not selling, you're dying, right? So that is now your job. You take off the hat of cleaning and you put on the hat of selling, marketing, of branding, all that stuff that you didn't focus on before. And it gets to be a little overwhelming, but here is the point. As that person takes on the role of the hours, you're gonna bring somebody else on because now you're selling eight hours a day, you're out there getting more work by branding, marketing, selling, whatever. Now all of a sudden their 40 hours is growing so much faster than it ever has before 
because you have an active salesman. You have you, right? Now you're going to have to bring somebody else on. When you bring that other person on, now they split hours. Now that 40 hours is going to become 20 because there's two people doing it. Yes, there's training and all that. But now they're only working 20 hours. You've just upset your employees, right? Because now they're not working as much. Now you have to work harder yourself to get the other 40. And you keep doing that. And as the work comes in, it's just like if uh, uh, somebody leaves a, a spigot on in a house and you got a bucket. As soon as that bucket gets full, you got to grab another bucket. You got to get a bigger bucket. You have to keep getting all that that comes in. Some of it may splash. You may lose some of it. But you need to continue to contain as much as you can. That is business. The flow is happening. You need to make it either flow more or flow less if you decide not to go the employee route. And those are your new hats. Your new hat is to make sure that your employees now have work. Why? Because you are not going to be making what you made before with employees. Now, I know for even numbers, we talked $10. That was just a difference between the hourly rate. But now you have to think of the cost associated with having employees. You go, yeah, I know, you got extra this, extra that. But here's, here's some of the breakdown of the big ones. Not only is an employee going to be, if you go the route that I always explain to go the tempor- uh, temporary employee uh, temp route that through payroll service, we pay 38%. So that employee now, that $10 turns into $13.80. Okay? Even numbers still. So that uh, extra 38% is put on. That goes to everything else for the employee that has just the employee. You go, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I can still do that, right? Okay. Now you have to have a separate vehicle for that employee. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You have to have a truck for them because the vehicle that you have or that you were using before, maybe that goes to them, but now you need a new vehicle. You need a vehicle so that you can go and do your sales. You can go to the store to get the marketing brochures or the stamps or the what. You got to have an extra vehicle. So now you have the extra cost of a vehicle. You have the extra cost of the insurance on that vehicle. And you may have extra costs of setting that person up with their own equipment. Now, you may not have an extra water-fed system, but you may have their own squeegee bucket, that type of thing. So you have some cleaning equipment and they have it. So if you ever need to be that extra person out in the field, you can do that nice and easily. If you don't have that, then you limit yourself to using yourself as a spare time and you know, basically employ. But now, if you do have all of this done, you're going to need apparel for that employee. And you're going to need to have uh, insurance or bonding on that employee. You may need to have just insurance in general. Hopefully, you had it before. If you didn't, here's your chance to get it, right? But now, all these extra costs go into it. So now, when we joke around and say that, uh, you know, for every uh, dollar they earn, you earn eight cents, it really does translate to about 30% equates back to you after all this is done. So now you need to bring in more work because you're taking a pay decrease at the same numbers that you would have by yourself. So you have to get out there and really, really hustle. You have to be mentally ready to do that too. A lot of guys go, ah, dude, that's no big deal. Yeah, until you start doing it eight hours a day and realizing that everything that you do, you're not getting paid for. You know, when somebody's out doing production, it's like hiring a first office person. That person's making you no money. They're helping the whole system, but they're making you no money. They're producing no money. Just like somebody who uh, gets out out of the truck for the first time. Now, all of a sudden, you're not cleaning. You're not actually making the money. You're making the jobs to make the money, but you're not earning anything. So you have to work that much harder to make you make sense. And we'll come out with a show here eventually too called Would You Fire You? And I love that that question, that concept. If you were an employee of yourself, which you are, really, would you fire you or would you clone you? And a lot of people go to clone right away. Ah, man, I clone me, man. Nobody works like me. I'm so hard. Think about it. Break it down to actually what you do. Like if your employee did exactly what you did by leaving early that day or by, like I used to do, play we as opposed to going and cleaning, right? Would you fire that person? No, I wouldn't tolerate that. I would never tolerate, right? So you have to get to the point where you are a great employee. You have to be an amazing employee. By the way, down below, if you're watching this on YouTube, tell me, would you fire you? Would you? 
Anyway, you have to be an asset to your company and now your hats just change. You have to work harder because you're not producing the money. You know, The other thing that um, comes into play is the hiring side of things. Even your first employee, you need to keep having that pool. The ABH rule, I'm telling you. ABH, if you get nothing else from any of my shows or series or anything that you ever watch, understand that you are always hiring. Always be hiring. ABH, always be hiring. You have to. You have to always be hiring. Why? Because the uh, employees you have will leave. The uh, employees you have will suck. You know, you will get to the point. If you have one employee and they're doing the 40 hours and now you have all these other hats here you're doing where you're working 40 hours a week, they're working 40 hours a week and they decide, hey, you know what? Screw you, I'm going to work for fish, right? What happens? Now all of a sudden, your 80 hours of work that were getting completed, now you have to drop all that other stuff to go back to cleaning. And now you're in the mindset, oh man, I had all this stuff. I had these jobs I'm trying to line up. I wanted to go sell. I wanted to go do this. I got Now all of a sudden the panic strikes. You know, that really sets in. You have to start the whole hiring process again. You need to um, find the people. You need to interview the people. If you're doing the process that we talked about, then you need to bring them on, train them for the day, see how they work, bring them on for the week, see how they work, bring them on for four weeks to do the training before they're even up. So your hiring process is going to take a week or two just to get applications and interviews set up. You're gonna get 10, a- 10 applications, three of them may actually answer the phone and uh, you'll set up for interviews and maybe one of them will show up, right? The, the, the screening process sucks for employees. If you want, go back and watch the uh, episode we did on employees, you can learn more about that. But it sucks and it's a long, long process. So if you're always hiring, and even if you say, hey, we got a position, you know, we may not have a position coming up, but we're, we're screening people. You don't have to tell people about that. Tell them about what the position is that they are hiring for or all that. Get these people in the door. Keep checking them out and you always have a fresh pool. Also, what that does is it keeps the employees that you do have, even if it's the first one, not grabbing you by the short hairs, right? Because now you have these backup plans where all of a sudden this process that was taking you a full six weeks to get back on your feet is now really only going to take you three weeks, four weeks, maybe, because you got such a great employee pool that you're pulling from. Yes, they may get other jobs and yes, something else might happen, but maybe this is what they want to do. Keeping their name on there uh, when it comes time to hire and say, hey, we got that positions opened up. We'd love to bring you on board. Hey, sorry, I, I had ended up taking another job. Oh, yeah, definitely not a problem. And keep us, keep my number. If something happens, you don't like that job, give me a call. Right now, all of a sudden, these people are vying for you. Always be hiring. We'll save you so much in headaches that you will be very, very grateful that you did it. Definitely. But always be hiring. You always need to keep that pool fresh because you never know when that employee leaves. It's the same thing when you have two employees. What happens when your senior guy leaves out of the two? Now all of a sudden the other one who may still be training, now you have to jump in, do all of that work, plus the work you were doing before, plus train the new employee, it could really put you in a bind. You don't have that when you're working for yourself. If you're sick, you're sick, or God forbid if you fall off a ladder or something, get injured, I get that. But with employees, there's a lot more uh, avenues that come into um, screwing you, <laughs> basically. And yes, I know. I have some great employees. Oh man, I got some great employees too. But I've had some really, really bad employees. Like they exist. They're not going to care about it like you. They're just not. uh, You have to understand. I I say this, you know, I've I've said it before, but your business is your baby, right? You start it from nothing, like a baby. You, You hand feed it a bottle. You change it. You do everything. You give it all your time and day. You get home and you're so tired. You're just, oh, I gotta sleep. I gotta wake up early. That's a baby. And then it gets a little bit older, right? Eventually, it can go off to uh, elementary school, right? Okay, okay. You got a couple hours that it does its own thing, but you have to get it off the bus, right? You still have to feed it at night. You still got to take care of it. It really relies on you. As the baby grows up, eventually, they'll go off to college, right? Where now, all of a sudden, you can kind of uh, let things be. You're, you know, you're, you're not running it as much. You're still running the systems in place, that type of thing. And eventually, if it ever gets married then um, that's like selling your business, right? It is like a baby. It's such a cheesy metaphor for it, but it really, really is. This is huge. An employee comes and it's a job. 
They're just a person. Hey, I'd like a job. Yep, okay, cool. I do work, I get paid for it. When I'm done, I punch out and go home and don't think about anything and maybe uh, come back tomorrow. Like, that's an employee. They just won't care. And it's uh, hard for people to wrap their brain around why. Nobody will do it like me. Nobody will. Understand that. Don't look for somebody to do it like you because they won't. Nobody will care like you. But you got to find somebody who's good. And uh, that's kind of the hard part of it. Um, but when you're in the field doing everything, you, you suck up your time. So employees are super valuable to accelerate the other side of things. Um, now your whole job, when you're out of the truck, is to sell and get these people, keep them working, keep them happy, and keep them doing everything that they possibly can. And the biggest thing you can do for your company at that point is creating systems. Creating systems to make everything run smoothly. It's the same reason why um, McDonald's builds a Big Mac the exact same way at every one of their locations worldwide. Why the lettuce goes in what position on the bun, on the burger, on the this, right? It sounds so stupid, but systematizing everything makes everybody a understand everything so that as your business is growing you're building this really strong structure to make everything from there on go out but that's all on you now this is your job you need to be busy you need to make yourself indispensable you need to um take the time that you've freed up by getting an employee to do the actual work to be super valuable to your company and that is the part that people sometimes forget what their job is, what hats they have on now. So just understand it. Understand getting out of the truck is a huge thing. It's 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 super important if you want to grow at an accelerated rate or, like I said, if you want to get bigger than a one-man show. It's a huge jump, a huge jump. It is, you know, it, it's not like, hey, jump over this puddle. It's, hey, jump over this lake. It's huge. It's so much inside of you that to take that jump, that a lot of people don't ever even do it. So you need to decide on if it's in you or not. You know, it changes the dynamic of what you have to do and what you your company does. But take it. If you're to that point where you have so much work you can't know what to do with, you're gonna hire a helper on, you're gonna start giving them, oh my my customers, they, they need me there. No, they don't. They don't they might like you, but they don't need you there. Like eventually. I could tell you right now, out of all the employees, uh, out of all of the customers I have, maybe, maybe one percent, if not less, have ever even seen me. I talk to them on the phone, book it, crew chiefs go handle all that. They're the faces. I know people love them and request them, and they want them, and they will only give the check to them, and they only. That's what I want. I want to be removed, and it's very, very easy to do that once you find the right people. So do it. If you're in this point in your life. Take the jump. It's it's a tough one. But uh, remember, don't get to the point you want to fire yourself. You need to now work twice as hard to make this whole thing run. So if you're ready and you're up to it, take the jump. It's definitely worth it. But like I said, I appreciate you guys watching. You are now part of the nation. You are now one of the watchers. And, uh, and you guys and gals in the nation, you guys are amazing, amazing, amazing people. I truly appreciate it, like I said. Sending me text messages just saying what's up. Love the podcast. Hate the podcast. Your nose is crooked. Your hair was messed up. Whatever. I don't care. Send me anything. Say what's up. Uh, and uh, I get, want to give a genuine, genuine, genuine thank you to everybody who has allowed me to put the order in for them. Has called me, texted me, voxed me, emailed me, anything about putting orders in. Listen, that's truly why we do the show. Uh, I want to help everybody. And part of that helping is putting in... Um, orders and answering questions on the product side of things. So again, my number 862-312-2026. That's truly my number. Text me anytime you want. Ask questions, say what's up. If you are international, um, if you text me on that, it doesn't allow me to text you back. I can't text international. It's actually the business line uh, VoIP to me, so I can't do that. And I also don't get pictures on it. So people send me pictures and then they wonder why I'm an a-hole for not getting back to them. Can't get pictures text versions I can. If you got pictures or if you're international, uh, email me josh at windowcleaningresource.com and we can chat that way. So uh, thanks again for everything. Hopefully you liked it, you thumbs up, and even better, you commented down below. Uh, watch also for some Facebook lives. We're doing a bunch of those. 
uh, where we're doing some really cool interviews and some fun stuff there. So definitely do that. And uh, like I said, I appreciate it. If you're ready for the jump, man, take it. It's a big one, but uh, you'll be really happy you did. So be epic and go make some money before, uh, before we can't anymore.